Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video I'm going to be responding to questions and comments. I haven't done this video in a few weeks and I like to sit down and kind of go over some comments that you guys have, some critiques, criticisms, and the like. And these videos are always a great way to kind of continue a conversation about fragrance. So let's get into the video. Now I will try not to have this video be as long as other videos, but there are some questions that I thought were really interesting, some comments that I thought were worth addressing. So I'm going to be um, obviously going into that. If I reference any video um, in regards to responding to a comment, I will link those below. So the first question comes from Larry Saylor and their question is, can you suggest two zoologist fragrances that would be best for daytime office wear in a professional setting? I love your coverage of these fragrances, but can't tell which two I would buy to wear daily for work. So the two that I chose, I chose one more shared masculine leaning and then one shared more feminine leaning. And I did respond to this comment and the two that I chose were dragonfly and elephant. And the reason why I chose these two is out of the zoologist fragrances, those are the safest. Now to me, zoologist is a challenging house, but not challenging in a negative way. I've described it before as challenging kind of view as a level of spiciness you can eat. So some people like mild food or can't handle super spicy food and some people like go out and eat just raw ghost peppers. And for zoologists, their challenging um, can go from like mild spicy to like super spicy. And so these are more of like kind of like that mild warmth heat that you would get if you were eating something. So elephant is very kind of beautiful. It's grassy. It's got a beautiful Darjeeling tea note in there. And the reason why I recommend that one is because it's one of the fragrances that is less animalic out of all of them and like white florals and animalic scents and super crazy like rich ouds like those kind of like almost fecal leaning oods, those fragrances might be a little bit too intimidating for a professional setting because you don't know if people around you can handle fragrances in regards to, you know, getting headaches, coughing, just getting nauseous. You don't want to impose on other people's um, work environment. You want to make sure that you are just smelling nice and not um, creating a problem. And so Elephant is one of the more kind of shared masculine leaning front scents that I think would work beautifully as a professional fragrance and dragonfly is the other now I really love hummingbird I absolutely adore nightingale but those can be a little bit too sweet those can be a little bit too sticky and a little bit too complex I think for a professional environment dragonfly like elephant has a beautiful just lightness to it but still has the unique qualities that zoologist is known for so in my opinion those would be the two safest recommendations uh, for a professional setting and this comment is from a video a long time ago but i don't talk about this fragrance much but this is a very well-worn fragrance of mine it's from evil prada 101 and it's on my entire creed collection video and they ask, what do you layer white flowers with? I just love it, such an underrated gem. And I agree, white flowers, honestly, is my most worn fragrance from Creed. I wear it all the time. I have it in a little atomizer. It's in my purse um, most of the time. I just adore that fragrance. I don't own a bottle of it because I get atomizers and I get it refilled, but I have been thinking about buying like a big, big one of it because I do wear it and love it a lot and I can't get to like a Creed counter to get it refilled. So first things first, I love to wear it on its own. I like to layer white flowers with fragrances that are green, fresh, and floral. So I actually really like to layer it with uh, Floralie. Floralie is a great fragrance to layer white flowers with. I also like to layer it with fragrances that have just kind of like a touch of musk. Um, Silent Street actually from Derek Lamb, I've layered it a few times with that, it's been great. I also like layering it with Lemon Verde and Herba Fresca from Guerlain. Those are actually some of my most layered fragrances, uh, but I like to layer it with fresh, musky, and floral fragrances. I think it works really, really well with those. It also smells really nice with white amber from Creed too. So this next question was actually on one of my last um, Answering Your Question um, videos, and it's from Rocco 69 rocks and they respond, hi, I was wondering if you ever blind buy and what happens if you don't like the fragrance? Do you give it away or sell it? Um, 
I also love watching your videos. Thank you. So I don't recommend blind buying. I definitely recommend always sampling or trying on your skin first before making a purchase, especially for expensive bottles of perfume that are $100 or more. But I do have to do a lot of blind buying for several different reasons. First, I purchase a lot of things to review. And so sometimes I might not have the ability to try the fragrance or I want to review it sooner rather than later for you guys. So I purchase it as soon as it's released and then it gets sent to me. Uh, most cases, uh, fragrances that I blind buy, if I'm not the hugest fan of, I will probably give away. Like if my mom likes it or a friend likes it, it'll go to them. But for the most part, I'll keep it because sometimes if it's not a favorite fragrance of mine currently, my taste change or weather may change or maybe I'll layer it with something that I like. So I do keep most of my purchases even if I'm not super happy with them but I do need to start sampling more. However, where I moved to, so when I lived in Fort Lauderdale, the Miami area, there were so many places that I could drive within like 45 minutes where I could try everything. If I went to the Aventura Mall, there was like standalone boutiques. There was like a Chanel boutique so I could smell all the Chanel fragrances. Uh, there was a Bond store. Every department store had like a full range of like high-end niche and luxury items. Like they had the full range of Armani Privé. They had the full lineup of Aqua de Parma, like the Colony ones. And just, I could go and try and sample. Here we have a Dillard's <laughs> and that's what we have. And their fragrance selection is nice, but it's not as expansive. So for the most part, I do do a lot of blind purchasing. So I tend to keep them, but I do declutter my collection a bit. So if I have a backup bottle of something and I decide I don't need, or if I'm paring down my collection or curating it, I usually will sell it. I think I'm only selling one bottle right now on my Depop. But for the most part, I will either give fragrances I don't like away to family if they want it, or I'll sell them. And I do have seller's remorse over selling a bunch of things. So um, after the last big purge curation, there's a lot of fragrances that I'm kicking myself for selling. And I just am kind of way less um, <laughs> into selling fragrances in case like a few months down the line, I decide I like them or I decide I found the right way to wear them or when and stuff. But I usually will give them away and then I'll sell them. But I always recommend don't blind buy, but I do like probably 90% of my purchases are blind buys. So uh, this last comment uh, is on my old video, uh, old like 2019, so like two years ago. This is on my review of Idol from Lancome. This is when it was first released. And this is from The Show Must Go On. And their comment is, I'm about to buy this, but it's been so, it, it has so been there, done that type of scent. The bottle is not practical, I agree, but the scent, while familiar and not groundbreaking, is pleasant. I find it loud, though. One spray is enough for me, otherwise it overwhelms me. First, I agree with the bottle. I actually hated that everybody was so focused on the thinnest bottle. Look at this bottle. I mean... It's a thin bottle. There's, it's a thin bottle. Like, good job. Good job. But I agree with the scent. And I agree that it is not a ground baking fragrance. Lancome did not reinvent the wheel when they came out with Idol, but it is a very pleasant scent. It is a very pretty scent. And I also think it works really well as a cohesive scent as part of Lancome's um, main lineup of fragrances. And that's where I think it was really successful. I think a lot of Lancome's fragrances are very, I don't want to say like mature, but they're definitely not super youthful. And I think that Lancome really wanted to create something beautiful that fit in with their brand identity in regards to their fragrance DNAs that could kind of capture a more youthful audience. And I think that Idol definitely did that. It's sweet, it's a little bit more playful, it's really pleasant and very pretty. And I find that it works really well as a scent that doesn't have an age to it. And I'm not saying like fragrances being genderless, fragrances are ageless. But there are a lot of fragrances, again, that are marketed toward a more younger crowd and fragrances that are marketed toward a more mature, towards a more mature crowd. You see more complexity, more layers up here, and you see like simplistic, minimalistic, but still very beautiful fragrances down here. Uh, I used to like, to, I like to say that Marc Jacobs is a brand that definitely is focused on the younger crowd and fragrances specifically like Dior and Chanel are marketed towards kind of like a slightly older and some of the fragrances are marketed towards a mature crowd. Anybody can wear anything. 
but like there's a men's fragrance aisle and a women's fragrance aisle there's also like fragrances that are marketed to a younger crowd smell specific way and fragrances that are marketed toward a more mature towards i don't know why i can't say that word towards a more mature crowd are marketed a specific way and so that's why when something smells mature it's because it has the characteristics of fragrances that are marketed toward, towards why can't i say that towards a more mature audience and Lancome, some of Lancome's fragrances do kind of smell like they're marketed towards a more mature audience. And that's okay. Mature scents are gorgeous, just like youthful fragrances are gorgeous too. And I find that Idol was this beautiful blend of not forgetting where Lancome comes from when it comes down to their fragrances, specifically like how it fits in with La Vie as well in regards to being very pretty, very kind of sophisticated but easy to wear easy to understand and just there was something about it that just kind of took that idea of what la via spell is and added a playful kind of floral um, flirtiness to it it's very pretty it's very sweet but it fits within len cones um just idea of where they want their fragrances to smell their their scent dna their brand dna when it comes down to their fragrances and I think that's why there is a lot of excitement around Idol and why there was a lot of people loving it, but also people kind of being like, this smells the same. And I don't expect brands, again, to reinvent the wheel when they're releasing new fragrances. However, I would really hope that they kind of thought long and hard about when they kind of release a new fragrance and not a flanker how that fits within their other lineup being a cohesive line. And I think that Lancome did it really successfully with Idol. And again, it smells beautiful. It's not groundbreaking. It's not creative. It's not new, but it fits within Lancome's um, house. It's very cohesive. And at the end of the day, it's a pleasant scent. Like you said, it's pretty, it's beautiful, it's flirty, it's slightly youthful, but it has that kind of like rich sweetness that La Via Spell and its flankers have that I greatly enjoy. It doesn't smell like a flanker to La Via Spell, but it does smell like it is part of the Lancome family. And sometimes when you have such a big, like major fragrance <laughs> that people, millions of people love and are familiar with, to kind of carve out a unique spot that isn't in the shadow of this fragrance can be very hard. And to do so in a way that's mainstream and crowd pleasing because you want these fragrances to reach the masses because you're spending a lot of money on marketing, you want people to, to, to buy these. So you don't want it to be too crazy out of the blue while at the same time not looking like you're just being lazy and creating like La Via Spell 2.0 but not a La Via Spell flanker. So I do find Idol to be like that beautiful kind of mix of its own, but fitting with the Lancome family. Is it a groundbreaking fragrance? Absolutely not. Have you smelled it someplace else? Probably. But the way that Lancome has made it fit within its family, I think is something that is really fantastic. Is it a beautiful fragrance? Will it give you compliments? Yes. Most mainstream designer fragrances are designed to smell pretty and designed to be very complimentary. That is why they're so popular. There is a beauty and, you know, it works. A lot of people like it because it smells good. But I think a lot of people were upset that a new fragrance from Lancome didn't smell so out of the box, but I'm not surprised it didn't smell so out of the box. But I do think it's a successful fragrance and I do like the way it wears a lot. I do love wearing it and I haven't worn it in a few months. I actually like to wear it when it's slightly cold. So I'll probably be wearing it like, you know, like mid-October to like December. But for the most part, it's a nice scent. It's very successful. It works well as part of the Lancome mainstream lineup. And at the end of the day, it's a nice scent. I think I said that. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I love to sit down and chat with you guys. I didn't answer too many questions because I didn't want this video to be too crazy long, but if you have any additional questions or comments you'd like me to get into, let me know in the comment section below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.